Hello everybody and welcome back to Firefield Junction. Today we've got another review for you. As we can see, I've uh, got a very big box in front of us today. And we can see that today's model, it is the GWR Trainboat Class 800 Train Pack from Hornby. Um, I really, I've been so happy to finally have one of these. I was always going to get it because it fits in perfectly with the era and the Region 9 model. So I was always going to get it. Um, I wasn't entirely sure when though, I was, it was sort of just going to be one of those cases of get it when I can afford it and and so on and so forth. However, I couldn't uh, resist uh, waiting any longer when I saw um, Gage Master had these on offer recently because the RRP, as um, I'm sure if you know, but for those of you that don't know, the RRP from Hornby for one of these, not just this, not just this particular model, but all of their um, 800s and IETs and etc. that they're doing, the RRP is £502 at the moment. And obviously that is that is a ridiculous amount of money. Definitely do not pay that for one of these. It's really not worth it. It's a ludicrous price. The retailer price is £452, which is a bit better. Still on the pricey side though, in my opinion, for one of these. However, Gage Master had these on offer recently for £350. And obviously that is way, way better. Definitely more sort of about rights, maybe, maybe still maybe on the slightly pricey side, but certainly much more like it for a five car unit like this. So obviously couldn't resist that. And I thought I might as well, because the chances of seeing these coming up for that price again, certainly in the near future, I can't see it happening really, to be honest. So I jumped at the chance and I bought one. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with the Hornby Class 800s, um, they've been doing them for a few years now. I think they first the first one they released was back around back in 2017 or something. Um, they did another GWR one, 80004, and they also did the test livery one, um, 80002. Although it was only the end units at that time because the coaches for that model didn't come out until didn't come out until a few years later. Um, however, they did those, and then obviously as the years came on, they did um, 003 as well, um, 010 Panks and Bear, and they've also done obviously a few Azumas now as well. And then, um, as I'm sure you're probably aware, we've got the uh, Transpanel 98, Transpanel Express one to look forward to, um, Lumo, and then they're also doing a nine, nine car GWR one and a nine car Azuma as well. Um, I'll be getting the nine car GWR one, um, hopefully um, it's not too far away. Um, it's due around early next year, but knowing Hornby, I doubt that'll happen, but we'll have to see. I'm sure it'll be okay. Uh, but anyway, Trainbow. If you're not familiar with this uh, particular one um, in real life, um, obviously, technically, this one is uh, slightly outdated now um, because the real thing has a different rainbow now. It's got a larger rainbow logo on the side, um, and it's slightly different and stuff. But if you're modelling a certain era like I am, um, this uh, the earlier rainbow will certainly be perfectly fine for me. But obviously for those, if you are if you want the newer rainbow on there, um, obviously, well, you'll probably have to put it, put it on yourself, really. There's no other way you can really do it. You'll have to get either put a tra new transfer on the side or repaint it or whatever. Uh, but yeah, a few different options there. Um, so obviously a very big box that these uh, come in, but obviously it's a five car unit, so that's expected. Um, they are DCC ready, um, and that's in the underframe because that's another thing with these. Um, which is quite nice. Um, I do. I think it was a very good idea on Hornby's part. If you want to chip these, um, obviously you need a decoder for each end. Um, but the decoder, you don't need to take off the body. Instead, the circuit board and everything is in the underframe. So there's three screws holding the underframe de uh, sort of detail on here. Th three screws. Take that off. This just comes off, and then that gives you easy access to the circuit board and DC socket underneath. Oh, which is very very good. So you don't um, have as much need to take off the bodies on these. Uh, which is not it's not too hard they, they are just clipped on but it can be a bit of a fiddle sometimes especially getting them back on um anyway let's ha ha carry on looking at the box on the back we've got some information here about the real thing so it talks about um how these um get sort of similar to the class 395 javelins um and it talks about um, their history and then obviously further on we've got information about this particular one so if you want to read all that um, feel free to Put the box back over it's very very heavy uh but yeah overall i don't think there's uh, too much else to say really uh, might as well open it up and have a look um if you don't own one of these models yet and you're thinking about getting one um i do recommend it they are nice models um they're not without their problems um, especially early on uh, the first uh, gwr one that Hornby did um, did have 
I mean, it did have some issues, um, especially with the bogeys. It was quite prone to derailments, unfortunately. However, they did solve it on later releases, and also they solved it on those as well. If you had that issue, they and then you could send it to Hornby and they would fix it for you. Um, but anyway, with the box open, we can see we've got the usual uh, two. We've got two polystyrene trays here. So one of them has the coaches, and one of them has the motor units and the other end units. And that's definitely the end units on there, so I can fill the heavy motor units, putting more weight on this side. So we might as well look at these first. Just put the coaches to one side. Um, so it is um, all sellotaped down, um, so this is going to be interesting. Should uh, hopefully be able to get it off. If we can. Okay, no, I think I'm going to need, need a knife for this. Uh, so I'll quickly go and grab a knife um, or some scissors or whatever uh, so I can cut the tape. And then we'll come back and we'll carry on with the review. Okay, there we go. One second later, is an edit editing magic. So nice little craft knife, just to make it nice and easy. So we'll just uh, cut uh, the tape. Might be a bit interesting. There we go. Do one along the bottom. Come on, get in there. This probably would be easier if I didn't have the camera in the way, but we'll do it. We'll carry on anyway. No, that's not going to work. Let's try this way. There we go. And just do this side as well. We can leave the tops taped down um, as it is, so that'll be fine. There we go. Finally, you can put that to one side. And now we can finally have the big reveal. So lift this up. Okay, no, not quite yet. We've got all the instructions and everything. So first of all here, uh, so this just talks about just all in the decoders, uh, lighting operation. So for lighting control under DCC, a decoder must be fitted, uh, both the dummy and the powered cars. So standard thing, sort of same to the, for the HSCs and stuff. Uh, setting the dummy car default decoder direction to reverse. Ah, uh, yes. This is another thing with the Hornby's Classic 100. It's not just, um, it won't just be with this one, but I think all of them, it's just the way that they're wired up. When you chip these um, with decoders and you obviously convert them to DCC, with the dummy units, uh, which will be this one here, you need to change a CV29 um, on the decoder because when you first chip these and you go to turn the lights on, you'll end up getting the same lights at both ends, which obviously you don't want. So in the dummy car, you just change a CV29 uh, and uh, change it uh, from, I think, bring it from six to seven. Uh, see what it says, e.g. Hornby decoder, so also the Hornby decoder, that's the R number. Uh, factory default for CV29 is six. In this stage, the decoder will operate in normal dire default direction. See, so yeah, I just change CV29 from six to seven, and that'll fix it. Um, obviously, if you don't have a decoder, if you don't have a controller that can edit CVs, um, then you might be a bit stuck because you really need to be able to do that really. Um, obviously if you don't then you could obviously send it off to someone to do it for you or you might have a friend that could do it. Um, this would be no issue for me because I can do it and I've, had, and I've done it before as well. Um, I don't know if you can see that it does say there the Hornby Select does not support this uh, direct access to CV29 but can edit CV29 through basic use of the... oh uh, hold on. But can edit CV29 through basic use of the direction buttons and the zero key. That's interesting. So you can change. I'm guessing this is only on the newer versions of the Hornby Select, but it looks like you can edit some CVs, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, so that's quite cool. I didn't realize uh, that you could do that, but it, look, it looks like you can, but it, um, if you need to go to the actual manual of the Select controller to do that. Um, but still, I don't recommend using the Select for this. And then we've got other issues such as troubleshooting um, and all the other usual, usual stuff. So yeah, that's nice. So very important. I do recommend you look through this um, if you're not familiar with these models. And then we've got the usual instructions as well. So we'll all be familiar with this. So Hitachi Class 800 electric locomotive. Well, tell it's by modal because it's diesel and electric. Um, DCC ready, DCC fitted and south fitted. And obviously this is just DCC ready at the moment. So all the usual stuff, running in, uh, lubrication, servicing. So you can see all the usual stuff. So coupling the models together. Uh, lubrication, uh, it talks about the order to put the coaches in, um, removing the body if you want to, so yeah, it's just clipped on, um, it's quite easy to get these off, I recommend starting from the back, work your way forward, uh, just ease the body up, uh, so you need to slide it out just a bit from the nose end so you don't uh, catch the coupling, and then reassembling the body, DC ready, so you can see there what, uh, what I said earlier, the circuit board and the underframe, 8 pin sockets, um, it does say the space for a speaker, which technically there is, you can fit a speaker in there. Um, but really, if you want to fit a sound to these, uh, fitting a speaker and code in the underframe, it's a bit of a challenge because there's not a there's not really any room in there at all. 
Um, so you can do it um, depending what speaker you use, but really you, and you're going to want to put either the Takoda or the speaker inside the body shell really, um, but it's not impossible, you can do it, um, I'll be doing it on this one, I'll try and fit both in the underframe, um, but it is a bit of a squeeze sometimes um, really, it's, it's, but it's fair enough, they've decided, they've decided to do it this way which is fair enough because it saves time to take the body off, it's just easier, um, but yeah <laughs> that's that, and then yeah usual television suppression on the back. So that's that. So finally we can see the two units here. So we might as well start off with the motor units. That's probably the most important thing. So just gently oh, lift it out. Got some packaging there. So it's all nicely wrapped up in this uh, plastic film. So we'll just take that off. And then we'll put that back down and put that to one side. There we go. And here we are. So yeah, <laughs> as we can see, it's the typical standard classic 100 from Hornby. That bug is hanging down a bit low. It's a bit strange, but okay. Um, <laughs> that shouldn't cause any issues, I don't think. Um, but yeah, as we can see, it's a great model. Hornby have done the, a great job on these classic 100s. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely room for improvements in various areas. But certainly, overall, it's not too bad. It's not bad at all. You've got loads of detail all over the place. You can see the detail on the um, sort of air dam nose cone there. The bogey detail is not too bad. It's not the best in the world. We have seen better, but the well, the Hornby Classic 100 bogey, well, the Classic 100 bogeys in real life there, there isn't really much colour to them. They are sort of, well, just like this, really. But yeah, as we can see, livery application is amazing. No blemishes anywhere. Everything's been applied really well. You've got seats inside as well, so if you wanted to put people inside there, you can. You can see the mechanism a bit. You can see it just about to see one of the drive shafts there, but well, can't really avoid that really. Um, you can see the oh, you can see the wires there a bit for the bogies. That's a bit strange. I don't know why they've had to make them so long, um, but yeah, <laughs> we'll ignore that. I think uh, the detail on the roof as well. It's not too bad. It's still you've got some nice heavily fitted detail on the roof of these. The pantographs are plastic, unfortunately, and especially for the price uh, that they charge for these these days, that's not really good enough. And they are quite flimsy, very cheap uh, plastic pantographs. So really, you want a metal one. I, you, I, you have to be honest, really, especially with the price. A metal pantograph wouldn't be too much to ask for. So quality there, not really what, you, what you'd expect for the price. But elsewhere on the model, it's still very good. You've got all the detail and warning signs on the back there. Got the doors, you've got the gangway, you've got the cu couplings here as well, and it's a special special sort of type of coupling so that you can only a, a couple other classic 100 coaches to this. You've got more underframe detail, again more bogey detail, you can see the first class there, the destination boards, and you can see you've got London Paddington, it says Reading, Reading and London Paddington, 1031 coach E. So that's one thing that's quite nice. It's nice that they've used a different destination uh, sort of board on these compared to the others. Uh, for example, 800-004, I believe it says uh, Cardiff Central on it and it's then Swindon or whatever. So it's nice that they've put a different destination board on these, um, which is, quite, again, quite good. It's nice they haven't used just used the same one from uh, other models. Obviously, we do have working lights. So you've got some nice, uh, very bright headlights on the front and on the top there when the model's coming towards you. When it's going away from you, you've got the typical um, tail lights there as well. Uh, the nose cones uh, do uh, come off. Um, there is a NEM pocket on, uh, behind there. If you flip it upside down, um, you can just about see uh, there with the couplings clipped in. And under and under here, you do have a dummy um, sort of BSI coupling, you know, with some hidden underneath here, the typical um, couplings of the Classic 100, if you're familiar with them underneath here. There's a nice dummy one underneath there. So you can't use it, but it's there, which is quite nice. So if you wanted to have this running for, um, and you wanted to simulate having the nose uh, cone open, which to be honest, with how many of them run in that stage these days, because they break all the time, um, you could do that if you, if you could do that if you wanted to. You've got the GWR logo as well. You've got the nice windscreen wiper, uh, not too bad. It's a bit flimsy, but still, it's not too bad. It's not, it could be, could be worse, there could be no wiper at all. We've also got some uh, decent cab detail in these as well. You can see on the um, sort of dash there, you can see all these switches, all the buttons and everything. It's not too bad, not too bad at all. You've got some nice detail inside here. 
Um, you can obviously see some of the circuitry inside there. That's uh, circuitry for the lights and everything there, which you can see through the windows, which is mm, it's not great, but again, it could be worse. And it's not really that noticeable when the model's running anyway. Um, but yeah, overall, not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Certainly um, not as good a value um, as these were when Hornby first released the 800, but still, and certainly for the price that I paid from Gage Master of £350, that's not too bad at all. RRP, an absolute rip-off, as is usual with most uh, new RRPs from Hornby. But certainly, um, if you get these for a good price, I recommend, sort of, if you can, paying at the absolute maximum, no more than 400 for one of these. And that is the absolute maximum, really. I don't recommend really paying any more for, for one of these if you can help it. Uh, but if you do get one, trust me, they're not bad. They're not bad at all. And you can see um, they're in the underframe where the speaker goes and everything. You can see the three screws there um, that you undo to take the underframe off as well. So yeah, overall, not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Put that to one side. We'll have a quick look at the dummy units. Um, obviously, it won't be much different to the motor. Obviously, just <laughs> no motor inside. So we'll just grab that out of the box and wrap it. So here we go. This is what the dummy units here. Obviously, much, much lighter. It's obviously the motor units, having the motor in it. Nice and heavy. Got the dummy unit, much, much lighter, but still not, not ridiculously light. It's still got some decent weight to it. So as we can see, detail, just as good as on the other unit. Again, nice underframe detail, beautiful delivery application. Again, you've got the destination boards as well. Obviously, you can see loads more seats inside because this doesn't have the blanked out sort of uh, buffet area. Again, typical plastic pantograph, which again, isn't really that good. Got this coupling as well. It moves quite nicely, that's good. Um, as we can see on this one though, we can't see any wires in through the window there, which is good. Unlike on the most units, can't see any of the wires going to the pickups. However, that does remind me actually, yeah, these don't have pickups on all of the bogies. And that is really, really stupid to be honest, in my opinion. On a model, 20, 2017 they first released this. And on this W unit, they only put pickups on one bogey. On the Hormi Classic 100s, this bogey here at the cab end, this is all that picks up power for the lights. The other bogey does not do anything at all. There's no electrical connection to it whatsoever. And that's not good, really, in my opinion. For a model like this, especially considering it's not incredibly old, it's six years old at the most, um, these, these Hormi Classic 100s, and they couldn't put all-wheel pickup on the dummy units. I mean, come on, Hornby. That's just, that's just taking the mick, really, in my opinion. A uh, bit, bit, bit of polystyrene there, I think, or is that just a bit of paint? Um, I think it might just, no, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, going back to the, going back to the bogey, how they couldn't put all wheel pickup on this on these dummy units, I do not know because come on, they could have easily done it. It really wouldn't have been that hard to put put pickups on here as well, and then just run some wires um, through um, through the uh, body here or through the chassis somewhere. So they couldn't be seen, but were still sort of there, easily accessible if you needed to. How they couldn't do that, I don't know. Other manufacturers have done it on other, on other models. For example, Backman with their Voyagers that they first released in sort of 2009, 2010. The dumb units on them have all wheel pickup. Trust me, if you get one and you get one of the end units, all the wheels pick up. So they could do it back then. Why couldn't Hornby do it now? Yeah, <laughs> there's just no excuse really. So that's definitely a mark down for quality on that because having all wheel pickup on any model really, it's not really too much to ask for. Well, I say all models, but certainly models like this, having all wheel pickup, it's not too much to ask and they could have easily done it. So yeah, a bit annoying there. But saying that, I haven't really had any issues with with the lights cutting out um, with just this bogey picking up. But it's still, it is going to reduce the reliability a bit because it's just relying on two wheels per rail. So especially if, for example, if you go over an Hornby Express point or something and the track's quite dirty, then you're going to get some flickering of the lights really. But yeah, I'm not going to moan on too much longer because I do that too much. But going back to the model, it's not too bad. It's certainly not too bad at all. We've got interior lighting as well. Yeah, these do have interior lighting for all of the coaches. The lights do light up. Um, I wouldn't say they're the most realistic, certainly on these, because the interior lights on these in real life are quite white and bright. However, on these, they've got a sort of more orangey-yellow LEDs inside, which are not very bright at all. So that's not really great in terms of realism. 
but at least you've got interior lighting, which is nice. It's nice that they've included it. Um, you can't control it, unfortunately. Um, certainly, once you put it on the track on DC or DCC, as soon as there's power going to these LEDs, they will just turn on. You can't control them or anything. Um, if you wanted to re rewire them so you could, then well, so you could, you could try. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but um, you could do somehow if you wanted to. Yeah, but still, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, obviously, it's not great, but still, certainly not too bad. So put that unit to one side. Um, get it out of shot. There we go. So that's the end unit. So we'll look at one of these centre coaches. We won't need to look at all of them because they obviously they are all exactly the same. So let's move all of that out of the way. So once again, you need to grab the craft knife because we need to obviously open up the packaging. So I'll bring it into shot again. Here we go. And then craft knife back in shot again. So we'll cut the tape. And there we go. And then the last one. Come on, do it from the other end. And there we go, that's that. So we can now put that to one side, so we shouldn't need that again. And lift this up, and there we go, we can see all the coaches there. So we'll look at uh, we'll look at the bottom one here, the one that's partially first class. Why not? <laughs> it's the first one I show, so it's good, we'll, we'll look at it anyway. So there we go, put that in there. Let's put the coach down there. We'll get this out of shot again. There we are. So here we go, one of the coaches. And as you can see, just like the other units, it's certainly not, not, not too bad at all. Um, obviously no pantograph on these, but <laughs> obviously there shouldn't be. And obviously you still do have the usual pickups um, here and there for the interior lighting. Um, are there white pickups on these? Uh, yes, they are. We can just about see there on that bogey there. We can see the pickups on there. And then none on the other bogey, nope. So just uh, one, again, one bogey picking up. Uh, but for the interior lights, um, I think that's okay, really. And um, the interior lights, um, I think they do have uh, capacitors um, in size to help with flickering and uh, and such. So one bogey picking up for them should be fine. Um, but certainly for on the dummy units um, with those directional lights, um, there's no capacitor or anything on them. So um, on that, it's not very good. But on this, it'll be fine because we've got a capacitor. So that shouldn't, so shouldn't be any issues there. But just like the other units, detail was very, very good. You can see all the roof there, all the detail on the roof. It's very, very good. Again, all of the seats inside. So, and if you wanted to put people inside again, then you can. Nice and easy. Underframe detail, again, very, very good. You can see all the paintwork there. It's all very nicely moulded. Everything's nicely fitted. There's no issues anywhere. All the bogies, they turn quite nicely as well. So we shouldn't have any issues with them. And I've got a bit caught there. <laughs> I think it should be fine though. And again, yeah, couplings as well. And the couplings move nicely. Yeah, that's the main thing. So yeah, all couplings work, so that's good. Again, you've got the des destination boards there, London Paddington, Reading, etc. Got the number one on the door for the first class section. Yeah, overall, not too bad. Certainly not too bad at all. Not Hornby's best value model, I'm sure you'll agree. And probably not the most detailed or the maybe the best quality um, in some areas. But certainly, overall, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. So I think what we need to do now then is help Stella out and get her on the track and see how she runs. Okay, so here we are, back at the layouts once again. I'm sure I'm sure it's a site we're all very familiar with. So we'll put the dummy unit on, dummy unit on first, I think. Should be nice and easy to do. There we go. Let's push her out the way a bit. Uh, now, we won't put the coaches on yet, because obviously she is a brand new model and she is going to need running in. And it's always recommended to run a new model in without a load. And um, however, with a unit like this, whether it be obviously one of these or a HST or something like that, I'd always recommend running in the end units because um, whilst obviously the dumb unit hasn't got a motor in it or a mechanism that needs running in, it's still got the lights in it and it's also got the pickups which will need wearing in as well. So I'd always recommend with models like this, um, running the two end units together for the usual 30 minutes in each direction. Uh, just to get obviously the mechanism on the most units fed in also again with the dummy units gets all of the lighting and everything sort of used to working in search as well and um, so we'll do that to start with we can put the coaches on later so let's just couple the two units together should be nice and easy there we go press them together and together they go nice click so there we go that should be that so i think what we need to do now then is give her some power now i actually has never run before 
So this will be the first time she's ever moved. So let's see which way she goes to start with. Backwards. Oh, there we go. See the lights coming on there as well. And the other way. Yeah, overall not too bad. So we can see that all of the lights working, which is good. Um, we'll check the dummy units for actually. Are the dummy units light working? Yeah, tail lights are working and the headlights on the dummy units. Yeah, all lights are working, so that's good. So I'll bring it back towards the camera again. Let's see how slow she can go at the moment. Any slower? Slower. It's about as slow as I can get it to go, I think. There we go, she is still moving. Yeah, you know what? That's not too bad. That's actually really good, especially for a brand new, brand new model on a very basic Hornby train set controller. That's not too bad at all. But anyway, let's get her running in, get her all warmed up, get her lubricated. Then we'll come back, put the coaches on and really see what she can do. Well, I'll tell you what, she's already got some speed. That's only 50% on the controller and already <laughs> she's running very, very fast. So God knows how fast she's going to go when she's fully run in. <laughs> Well, she's running very well, so we'll now leave her, get her, leave her to run in, and we'll come back, stick the coaches on, and we'll carry on and see what she can do. Okay, here we are, everybody. Welcome back. The model is all nicely running now. She's had a good 30 minutes in each direction, and I've also now coupled up her three centre coaches. So now we've got the full length model on the track ready to go. So I think. Well, not, not much else we can do really. I suppose we just need to give her some power and see how she handles it. So I'm sure she'll be fine, but you never know. Yeah, there we go. No problem at all. Well, I think you'll agree she's handling that to absolutely no problem at all. And well, so she should be. If she was struggling with this, then I think that would indicate a quite significant problem. <laughs> but yeah, she's great. An amazing model. Definitely needs a few little things updating here and there. And the price needs to be more reasonable, I think, especially from Hornby. But overall, all things considered, she's great. You thought, if you want one of these, I recommend getting one if you can. I definitely look around and try and get one as cheap as you can as well. Don't pay over the odds for them. If you do manage to get one, I'm sure you'll agree that they're great. These really are great models. Can't wait for the nine car version. That'll really be amazing. I don't know where I end up putting it, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But yeah, the Hornby GWR Class 800 Trainbow. <laughs> Excellent edition. And I'm sure she'll give many years of useful service. And now let's have some ratings for the new Hornby GWR Class 800 Train Bow Train Pack. First of all the detail, overall the detail on this model it's not too bad at all. Considering this model is now quite a few years old and Hornby haven't updated it at all for this model really apart from obviously doing the new livery. Overall still the model is not too bad at all. You've got a very nice mass of detail all over the place, you've got some very nice lighting features. The detail on the body side and the underframe looks very good. Even the detail on the roof is not too bad. I think the only thing that lets the model down uh, detail wise is the plastic pantograph on the top. Uh, overall the, the pantograph it's okay, it does the job, uh, but still certainly for the money you'd expect a metal one, it would certainly look a lot better as well and it would make the quality of the model overall better as well. 
um, but overall still, all things considered, the detail, I can't fault it too much really at all. Um, I think maybe it would be nice maybe to have a bit more painted detail inside, um, maybe such as the seat, uh, add, it, uh, add a bit more detail to those. But still, overall, not too bad uh, detail wise. The performance overall in this model is really, really good. Hornby's uh, mechanisms usually are very good quality and most of the time they pro provide some really good performance. And this is definitely no exception. The model runs very, very well. It has no trouble hauling the rest of the train around the layout. A very good range of speed and very good torque. Overall, it's not too bad at all. Very nice performer, nice and quiet, it's nice and smooth. Can't really ask for much better. Uh, the quality overall again as well on this loco, well say loco it's the multiple units, um, overall the quality is not too bad, again it's, it's, you can't really ask much better. Again the pantograph, um, like, as I mentioned earlier, is definitely the main thing that I think lets the quality down because it's a very flimsy uh, plastic pantograph that's very easy to damage. So you really, you really do expect to have a better quality pantograph than on this model. A metal one would look better. It would be much better quality, it would definitely be uh, less uh, prone to getting damaged. Um, there's even the potential there for the Pantograph to even work if you wanted to. Even if Hornby didn't do it, you, it, it would make it um, certainly a bit easier uh, for the user if they wanted to make the Pantograph work. Um, but as it is, it's not really that good. Espe again, especially for the value with how uh, much these are these days, you really should be getting a metal Pantograph. I was considering marking this model down as well, to be honest, on the interior lighting. But again, whilst it is nice that you've got it, it's a very good feature. Um, I don't know why Hornby made the LEDs in this in, on the interior yellow, and um, they're like a yellowy orange instead of the prototypical white like they are on the GWR ones. Uh, so why they did this, I don't know. It's been like it since they, re since they released it. Whilst being inaccurate, in quality-wise, it, it's nice that you've got some interior lighting full stop. Obviously, other manufacturers and other Hornby models don't have this feature, so the fact that this model does have it overall, it's a very good feature. It just would be nice if the LEDs were white instead of yellow. Um, other people have upgraded them, um, but I, I haven't, and I probably won't be doing it anytime soon. Um, and overall, it's, again, I can't really mark it down because it's not really a terrible feature. Um, because again, we have got the interior lighting, um, so. Overall, um, I'm not going to mark it down on that, but it's nice that we've got it, it's just probably just a little bit annoying really. Uh, and overall, the value for money, last uh, last thing, I think, <laughs> considering all things considered, I probably have been maybe a bit uh, um, probably a bit kind here with this, um, because the, certainly the RRP that Hornby now charge for these is absolutely ridiculous. Just over £500 for one of these, it's just ridiculous money, they should not be charging that for them. Uh, the price that I paid of 350 from Gage Master, uh, Master on sale, definitely more reasonable. That's definitely more 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 value uh, for money price, I think, for these. So I've sort of split the difference and given it 8 out of 10. Overall, it's not too bad. Um, again, don't pay the RFP. I never recommend paying the RFP from Hornby for stop anyway. Um, but I think even the recommended retailer price of £452 for these is still quite high. That's definitely. Um, a bit too high relief for these um, considering what they're like so if you can get these for around 350 pounds um, maybe slightly more maybe slightly less that's recommend really what i uh, recommend uh, trying to get these for uh, but overall value certainly for what i paid definitely not too bad at all so that's an overall score of nine out of ten uh, definitely higher than i was expecting to be honest uh, considering um, that that's down that this model is around six seven years old um, so overall despite that uh, definitely a well deserved score all things considered um, I definitely recommend getting one if you can, um, not just in this livery, but any livery that's suitable to you. I recommend getting one, uh, but definitely don't pay over, over the odds for them.